What's up gamers? Welcome to Gamer Rant. My name's Kevin. If anything, the one thing we can learn about the consistency of Ubisoft is, well, it's looking like they're trying to be the next Electronic Arts in, well, pretty much every negative way. Why isn't it in the fucking game without a free order? It's blind. Stupid fucking fanboyism. Microtransactions and DRM. Downloadable content. Rainbow Six Siege fans roudly boo the announcement of a new monthly subscription service. Siege's upcoming nine-year Season 2 will feature a complete remaster of The Recruit, which there's other information that also suggests that it's actually not what we would call an actual remaster, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. The update will also nerf the defenders, uh, Fenra and Soil, who were too strong in matches and demand significant attention from attackers. But it's the addition of the R6 membership that has some players unhappy for $10 per month or $80 for an annual sign-up. Subscribers get a continuous stream of premium content that keeps your ops equipped with the best exclusive garbage gear. Monthly content drops will include a time-limited, dick-sucking corporate bullshit legendary item, sometimes animated for extra corporate flair, and an epic corporate operator bundle, along with monthly wailing cosmetics, bravo packs, and full access to the premium battle pass with 10 level skips. I'll admit I've never played the Under Siege thing, but isn't this like a multiplayer game? Or it, it's, a, it's, you know, a portion of a multiplayer game? Level skip seems like it's pay to make it easy, pay to make it win. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be people that probably would say, well, it's in insignificant, it doesn't really help you, but to me, it's still the same thing. Pay to make it easy, pay to make it win, which I'm not really sure... Fucking, goddamn, Ubisoft, the new electronic arts. That's uh, apparently what we can go with, what we can learn from this. And then, of course, it gets, you know, even better, ladies and gentlemen. The next update will have unlocked as a bonus. For players who will join in the first week of season two, you will get an exclusive epic bundle only after during that period, as well as 600 member subscriptions. We want to make membership involved in order to make members feel like true VIPs this year. So as always, we'll be listening to your feedbacks to see how we can make the People not happy about that. Here's a, a different camera angle. In order to make members feel like true VIPs on So as always, we'll be listening to your feedbacks. So what we can take away from this is we know gamers will continue to learn nothing. Um, this is a consistency that if you look throughout the history of any kind of video game controversy, you look at everyone, my old videos, um, I pretty much 99% of the time put the blame on the developers and the publishers, which ironically is what everyone else did, whether we're talking Osmond Gold, whether we're talking uh, Angry Joe, Alpha Omega Sin, Boogie29888. Oh yeah, sure, maybe every now and then we'd mention gamers are somehow the problem, but it was never the focus of the argument or the rebuttal. And I think it's that very mistake that puts us in the position that we are in now. Because we we generically gave gamers the assumption that this problem exists because of publishers and developers. When the truth of the... Oh, and the whales. Because we would mention the whales every now and then too. But we would fail to realize that gamers are the problem as well. You playing the game and not buying a microtransaction is factually the support of microtransactions. The the idea don't like it, don't buy it usually was the stipulation toward microtransactions rather than the game itself. So you would get people that would, all right, I'm going to stick it to the company. I'm going to go buy the game, but fuck the microtransactions. And well, here we are. <laughs> You know, so I think one of the biggest mistakes of the reasons why we are here is, you know, the channel like myself and people who uh, just kind of created videos similar to the videos that I create, they focused on other stuff as well, is we constantly would put the blame on publishers and developers when I think the reality of it is, is would we be in the same area or position if all of us had put the blame where it actually should have been on the gamers? You know, a matter of this isn't just, 
if you don't like it, don't buy the microtransactions. Don't buy the fucking game because that is giving money to the company, which is speaking to them saying that this is okay. The majority of gamers accept this. At the end of the day, when we look at, you know, this, we, we can hear the people booing, but it's probably going to become the new norm because this is what video game controversies have shown us. This is what microtransactions, this is what subscriptions have shown us in the past gamers don't like it but then eventually some of them will more than likely shut up and continue playing the game or they may even sign up for the subscription when i think what should be done you and i both know this is people just need to stop playing rainbow six siege that that's the only way this is message is going to get across to them is if people just stop playing the game. But unfortunately, you and I both know that's not what's going to happen. There's just going to be people there, like in the past, well, I don't like it, I'm not going to pay for the subscription. Well, you playing the game is still the very support of that subscription. You don't have to get the subscription to support the subscription. You're keeping the game alive, you're doing exactly what the company wants. Because they listen to money. Actions speak louder than words. This video, and every video, with the vast majority of any video game controversy is in so consequential to when companies start seeing that there's a potential for loss of money or revenue. And that's when they backpedal and that's when they change their mind. But what gamers have always done consistently is complain about it, put the blame on the developers and the publishers. But then there are those gamers that, yeah, they don't purchase a microtransaction, but they continue to play the game. They won't never purchase this subscription, this membership, but they'll continue to play the game. And that is what is the problem, I think, in just about every video game controversy, is that actions speak louder than words. Your actions of complaining about something and then like, oh, hey, fuck it. I'm not going to get it, but I'll continue playing the game. Well, there you go. You spoke to Ubisoft. You told them this is okay, that you are willing to accept this. You're just accepting it in a different way. The only difference between you and the people that signed up for it is one is willing to pay where one is not, but you're both willing to still play the game, which is sending the wrong message to these kind of companies. It's This mentality has never worked for any controversy. You, uh, I'm telling you, look at my old videos. A lot of my old videos, 99% of them. This goes for any other YouTuber that, you know, was ranting and raging about this microtransaction online past back in the day. You could find videos of this. Of this. Everybody putting the blame on the publisher and the developer when the truth the fact of the matter is it's us we are our own worst enemy and, and the reason why none of this ever changed is because of us if you doubt me just look at assassin's creed shadows look at star wars outlaws look at the avatar pandora whatever the fuck that name game was called all three of these games require an online connection to install the game which goes against game preservation what company just recently revoked gamers rights to play a game ubisoft the crew which does contain a single player campaign which does have a physical copy and now it doesn't even work so what makes you think that they're not going to do this in the future when it comes to these single player games they are releasing here in the now and that they won't revoke your right to play it because it requires you to be online in order to install the game. Which, why would they do that? Because they can then later revoke your access for it. I'm speaking about it. Other gamers have spoken about it. We all know that this is going to be a thing. This isn't they might do it. They've done it. They're just setting it up so they can do it again. But this is the failure of gamers and why all three of those games were either bought or massively pre-ordered. Tell me again how Stop Killing Gaming, the movement, is about making publishers and developers change their ways when the mass evidence for those companies is that gamers support this idea. They continue to support it. Think about it in this aspect. If this were to go to court, the, the whole movement thing, and all Ubisoft is like, well, we have these three games that are single player games. The players know that in order to install the game, you have to be online. They also know that this game is not going to be supported forever, that at some point we will revoke it because we it won't be making us any money. We won't be earning any kind of revenue from these, especially these single player games, which is probably going to lose traction a lot faster than the crew. But here we are. This, this is why 
they can do this because of our inaction. Action is not, I'm not going to not buy the membership. I'm not going to not buy the microtransactions. When more gamers didn't like microtransactions, cosmetic or otherwise, it should be, we're not playing the game. We're not buying the game. That is action. But this is the one base fundamental that no gamer has ever learned. And this is why this will succeed. This is why microtransactions succeed. This is why loot boxes still succeed. We could sit here and talk about all the regulation, government and otherwise, that we want to. But remember, gamers, the biggest fucking problem in, in gaming is the spineless gamers that will easily bitch about something and then eventually just shut up and play the fucking game, which has never worked. Out of all the controversies for any game that's ever been in the limelight, how many have we won? Who's, who's got the bigger trophy room? Is it gamers or is it the publishers and developers? It's the publishers and developers because they know gamers as a whole that at the end of the day, we'll do what we've always done. Bitch, moan, complain, and then eventually just shut up and continue to play the games because that's all we've ever done.